Hi, Year 3 and Year 4. This is the next one of our history lessons. We're going to be looking at from 1890 to about the 1920s. Um, and there was quite a bit of um, development happening. I'm going to go over to the shared screen so that we can start looking at the PowerPoint. Okay. Here's our map of, there we are. Here's our map of Paddington um, around 1890. And you can see that there was a lot of development around the Victoria Barracks so along Oxford Street, starting to move down the hill a little bit. But most of the development has been in the upper part of Paddington on the higher areas. And you can see that down here at Rushcutters Bay Park um, and the Chinese market gardens here, that area that used to be swampland has been reclaimed as the Chinese market gardens. And we're going to look at how that was developed over, the, over this period of about 30 years. Okay. Now, this is a photo, so they were using cameras by this stage, um, of looking up from Rushcutters Bay up towards Paddington and Oxford Street. Here's Cambridge Street, and it's a bit hard to see here, but this um, object here is the bell tower that used to sit on top of the hall building. It's not there anymore, but photos show that it was there. Now, this photo shows that during the 1900s, Rushcutters Bay Swamp had begun to be managed. Um, Chinese market gardeners had built canals. There's one, this is a big canal here. You can see another smaller canal joining it down here. And they used these canals to channel water around what used to be the swamp land. And um, so it's draining the swamp land, but it's, they also used it to irrigate their crops. Um, now, on our next one, this is again a picture of the market gardens. You can see the rows of crops here and rows there. Okay, up here is Oxford Street with a water tower up there. Now the, the Chinese market gardens were important um, to the development of Paddington um, from about the 1900s onwards. Now the government policies at the time were discriminatory in that um, many of the Chinese people who had come over from the gold rush, um, who had come over for the Australian gold rush, um, had chosen to remain in Australia. However, the government um, was very European um, centric, meaning that um, they preferred to have people from European countries. Um, so the Chinese people um, who had developed all of these gardens um, and taken all of the fresh produce to market, um, they were now, the government was resuming their land, which was basically um, giving them money to leave their land. And because it was very flat and it was subject to flooding during heavy rainfall, it wasn't really suitable for housing. And we, on our next slide, we start looking at what they did. So the land wasn't very useful because of the flooding. Now, as we know from the earlier maps of Paddington that we've looked at, Trump, where Trumper Park is now, used to be part of the swamp. Glenmore Brook used to feed into that swamp and eventually out into Rushcutters Bay. Now Glenmore Brook runs underneath the P Trumper Park um, in pipes. Trumper Park was also a quarry for sandstone where it was dug out to below sea level and later became a rubbish dump. When it was developed into a park, the land had to be filled and raised to, in some places, by four metres to get it to a level um, playing field. The park seems to, was constructed around 1897. The first rugby league game was played at the park in 1903. So this was before any real organised um, rugby league games, and there was certainly no NRL at that time. The Trumper Park was originally named Hampton Park Oval after one of the governors of New South Wales. The park was renamed Trumper Park in 1931 to honour one of Paddington's cricketing heroes. And he is certainly very much a um, still known today, Victor Trumper. 
The last part of the sandstone quarry closed in 1967 and the area was replanted to form the duck pond. Now I did have a video in here uh, showing the closure of the quarry. There's a, there's a bigger photo of it. Um, so I've attached that um, the video to Google Classroom. So go in there and watch the video showing how they were sawing up the sandstone and the buildings that they used to build with that sandstone. It's quite interesting. Now, Sydney Grammar School purchased land at Rushcutters Bay because Sydney Grammar School is a city school. It's in the middle of Sydney. So they didn't have room for playing grounds, playing fields for the boys. So they purchased land. Um, and of course, it was nice and flat because it had been market gardens. Um, and they used this land to develop their playing fields um, and named it after Albert Weagle. And Albert Weagle was a headmaster at the school for 45 years. So that's why the, cricket, the sporting fields are called the Weagle fields. In 1964, um, Sydney Grammar School also brought some of the tennis courts from White City and began planning to introduce the preparatory school to the Weagle Fields. Preparatory school just means a, a public school from kindergarten to year six. It's in preparation for going to high school. In 1955, the headmistress of the Edgecliff Preparatory School, so that was a private school, offered for Sydney Grammar to take over the school and the following year, the Edgecliff campus was reopened as the Sydney Grammar School Preparatory School Edgecliff. And there was a huge sports stadium down at Rushcutters Bay. It was called Sydney Stadium. And it was a sporting and entertainment venue built in 1908. This was also on the land of the Market Gardens. It stood in the corner of New South Head Road and Neald Avenue, Rushcutters Bay. So here's a photo of the second building. There's um, Neald Avenue is this one here. And um, New South Head Road is this one running along here. It was demolished in 1970 to make way for the construction of the Eastern Suburbs Railway. Now, it was built. This was the original stadium here. You can see it's huge. It was built to host the biggest sporting event in Australia's history up until then. Um, 20,000 people came into the stadium to see Tommy Burns fight Jack Johnson in 1908. Now this fight was uh, an international, well, it was talked about internationally because it was the first time that an African-American man had fought for the World Heavyweight Boxing Champion, Championship, which he went on to take the title. In 1912, they demolished this stadium and built this octagonal stadium here with a roof um, so that they could hold their um, events um, when it was raining. Both buildings mostly hosted boxing matches during the 1950s and 60s. It was also used to host entertainers and concerts. And here's a photo of the Beatles playing at the Sydney Stadium in 1964. Now, who would believe that Paddington and Rushcutters Bay used to have an amusement park? White City was the name given to many amusement parks in America and England in the late 1800s. In 1913, a White City amusement park was built on the site of the Chinese market gardens at Rushcutters Bay. The park included lakes, canals, fountains, river caves, a fun factory, Japanese village, a giant carousel, which a carousel is a roundabout, a, a, you know, where horses ride around in a circle, a music hall, ballroom, and a fairground. The top picture shows the scenic railway, and it's you can see the title there, scenic railway, which was a giant roller coaster that travelled around a small version of Mount Kosciuszko. Is Mount Kosciuszko here? The buildings looked grand and expensive, but were actually just wood covered in chicken wire and white plaster. The amusement park was struck by lightning in 1917 and burned to the ground. The giant carousel somehow escaped the fire and was moved to an amusement park in Melbourne. In 1918, so after the stadium burnt down, 
um, it was sold to the government to be developed for housing. But because it was on swamp land, people questioned whether it was suitable for housing um, because during rain it would get flooded. So in 1920, the government decided not to proceed with um, housing and they sold the land to the Lawn Tennis Association. Now the Lawn Tennis Association kept the name of White City because everyone knew where White City was um, as it had been a popular destination for lots of people to go for um, fun. And so they kept the name White City and it has hosted many important tennis matches through the years. This one was the Davis Cup final in 1954 and it seated 25,000 spectators. Now it wasn't always set up like this. These were temporary stadiums built for the Davis Cup, but it held a lot of people, 25,000. This photo is showing the lawn courts there. Okay, um, after the Olympic games, New South Wales tennis, which it is now called, moved the um, major tennis tournaments to Olympic Park and um, the White City courts, as you know, are still there, but not very well maintained anymore. Okay, and that is going to be the end of our session today. Um, you've got a closed passage that will help you um, think through some more of that. Um, but you can see that that whole area that used to be swampland has now been um, created into parkland and a lot of recreation areas. There is still some housing there, but not very much. And that is why, because it used to be swampland and subject to flooding. Okay, bye everyone.